My name is Mark Kenyon, and I love white-tailed deer. I love studying them, too far, hunting them, and yes, eating them. Whitetails are found across a wider swath of America than any other large mammal, which is why I've set out for the ultimate whitetail tour, exploring the wildly different terrains these deer call home and the unique characters that hunt them there. On your love all the time. This week, I'm headed to far northern Maine to learn the art of tracking big woods bucks in the snow. And my tutor is living legend Hale Blood. I'll have one day to follow in his footsteps, and then I'm off on my own to try and track one down myself. You know, growing up in Michigan, my earliest hunting experiences were up in the northern part of the state. You know, in a landscape very much like this. Big woods, vast country, not a lot of deer. And I, I fell in love with that place and really fell in love with hunting in this landscape. But I was also in a situation where we didn't really have it figured out as far as how to kill deer. So I was always searching, I was reading magazines, I was trying to find people writing books about how to get it done in the big woods in big country. And I didn't have that mentor locally. I didn't have someone in my circle who could really show me how to get it done. So I've had a long running dream of connecting with somebody who's really perfected the art here in this kind of country. And Hale Blood is, is that guy. Not only how to kill bucks in big woods, but also how to track them down in the snow. This is a dream come true kind of experience. And I know it's gonna be challenging. And I also know that getting a kill isn't gonna be a you know, foregone conclusion. I very well may not get one. I am going to learn so much along the way that I'm not really gonna mind either way. I can't wait to get out there and see what's gonna happen. This is gonna be one of those that will go down in the record books, I think, as far as well-rounded deer hunting dream experiences. Which of these deer is the most symbolic or representative of what you do. Is there any one of this that's, oh yeah, that's the perfect example of hunting in Maine, big woods, tracking them down. Does anything stand out when you look at these deer? No, because they're all a different story. To me, it's about the whole story about what goes on for the day, you know? And sometimes it's can be quick, you know what I mean? An hour or two when you're done, and other times it's all day, most of the day. And that's kind of the mystique, I guess, is you don't know when it's going to happen. Right. It just has to, the day unfolds and you got to have a certain kind of timing and do the right things and make the right moves. And yeah. Hale has played a critical role in the culture of big buck hunting here in Maine, guiding hundreds of hunts and educating anyone brave enough on how to track down the largest deer in Maine. His cabin tells the story of every deer he's killed and how he curated a space to help others have a truly wild hunting experience. Is it that difficult 200? to get on a 200 pound buck in Maine? Or are they really? Well, you, you can't just say in Maine, because like I was telling you before, it's this, like if you drew a line through the middle, southern central Maine, they're not the same deer. So they don't get as big. A 200 pounder down in southern Maine is probably, you know, one in a couple of hundred or something, or one in a few hundred. But here, northern Maine, overall, it's probably one out of, you know, one out of 10, maybe. Here in town, it's always been, most years, I think it's behind this year because of the snow always bumps it up, right? But uh, it's usually one out of six, one out of five or six. So there's plenty of them around. Inspired by his stories of deer in the area, I ready myself for tomorrow, when we'll leave for my first day of training and tracking in these northern forests of Maine. How do you start a day like this? Like, how do you know, or how do you make a plan of where to start? Well, today's gonna be a little different, just because I, I've been up in here looking around, and I know there's a pretty good bunch of deer here. And then there's a few, there's always like different ages, but there's a few 
really good ones. That's all you can go by, you know. If you know there's some bucks around, you just hope you cut a track, you know, mm -hmm. a fresh track from the day. And this week I hadn't been able to do that. Some years or some weeks or whatever you'll go for days on end. And I mean, you can always find a buck track. It's easy to find a buck track. I walk by tons of buck tracks every day, but I'm looking for a particular one, and those are the hardest ones to find. It's like the, you know, the one in a hundred or something. I usually have a plan for the day. It's usually whatever I do, it's a big circular path I take for the day, you know. And I think about where I have to go to pick up a track that might be coming off a certain mountain or a certain ridge. I try to, it's not random the way I do it. I have to think about how they travel through that whole area, you know. So what's the game plan gonna be, Al? Shoot a buck. <laughs> Just that simple. We lost the snow down low yesterday, you know, cause it was still raining in the night. There'll still be some up high, so that's our only choice. So we gotta chase the snow, so we're gonna go high. So all we're gonna do is look for tracks. And when you pick an area like this to start walking around looking for tracks, is there a feature that you're going to try to follow? Is there some kind of previous sign that you know there's rubs up here or something? Yeah. Is there a reason we're going up here? I've been hunting up this country for, oh, I made my first trip here. I camped near here and 40 years ago. But I haven't, before that, I hadn't been up in here for probably 10 years. So all we're going to do is walk. And are we? Covering ground fast, or yeah. are we walk, still well, hunting not, carefully? No, no, no. We got to cover some ground. We got to, we got to move. And you could still hunt all day and not make it a mile. And you got to cover some miles to pick up a track. Okay. And if you were lucky on a day with good snow, you might find one the first hundred yards, and you might not find one for ten miles. You know. So, let's do it. Start walking. Yeah. How's that track look to you right there? That looks like a big, big <laughs> track. <man>. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. But it's before the snow. Okay. See that big track right there? Yeah. Stepping over the log? Yeah. I think that's big enough for us. I think we'll get on that track. Like you can drop that chapstick in there and it's the toes longer than that. I don't know, that's probably two and a half, but yeah. you know, an aught six shell will probably go in that, all right. And you're you're judging this as a buck track because of the length and because the dew claws are really yep. obvious, is that right? Yep, it's by itself. I mean it's a stack, because we do have doe tracks that big. But what about how old this is? Any idea? How are you reading that? You see here, you see how it's, it's, see, see how it's, it's made since the snow came yeah. and then froze? Yeah. I call this crispy, this stuff here. You still see that? It's power. not melted at all. You can see in that too, see? Yeah. So, it's all crispy. It's not old. I, I don't think it's more than a few hours old. Huh? Yeah. Which in the scope of things is... Pretty good, you know? yeah. Good enough for me. Good enough for you, yeah. Two bucks, same direction, yeah. See, you don't see much for dew claws in that one, and you do in this one. See how these dew claws are this way? So you find a track like this that's obviously not super fresh. You're just gonna cover ground. Yep. Lots of ground, okay. You think there's a chance that that buck could be Somewhere up over here. There's always a chance. Yeah. He just fed, turned right uphill. I mean, that's telltale, that's classic. What kind of shot situations do I need to be prepared for? Quick, short, close kind of stuff, right? Probably running. <laughs> you guys take 
running shots here. Yeah, we got snow on the ground. Yeah. Are you good at running shots? I do not take running shots. Well, you probably might not want to. I'll try to stop them. Yeah. Is there anything you feel that we didn't cover that I really need to know before taking off and trying it on my own? I mean, obviously there's a lot I need to know, but <laughs> any last little nugget that I could possibly use outside of 40 years of experience that might help me? Yeah. No. Okay. Cover ground, yeah. find a track. Well, I'm excited to keep trying. That's it. It's going to be fun. We don't want to miss supper. Let's get going. I agree. <laughs> all right, well, morning two, heading in on my own. Got to milk hail for all the knowledge I possibly could yesterday. So today, see if I can figure it out myself. Looks like a beautiful morning. It's something like 24 degrees. No new snow, but we got that snow yesterday, so I think we'll I'll have enough to work with and see what happens. Just need to get lucky. Like Hale said, if two points cross in the right spot, it can make for a great day. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for. spot that made hell were yesterday my game plan I think at this point is to walk in the same general direction we took on that first walk and head up that bridge because all the deer sign the majority of the activity we saw was up on those ridges so I'm gonna head that direction hope to cut a track and uh, you know I'll go from there stuff until you get in close so I'm just gonna cruise and uh, hope to cut a track it's loud there's no wind that's not ideal but I'm not gonna worry about that until I'm actually on a track and get close so I'm gonna cruise at this old logging road hopefully cut something as I go and if I don't I'm just gonna be on a nice hike I guess I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I'm gonna have any idea what I'm doing, but I'm pretty good at walking, so I can do that at least. These are fresher tracks here. Yeah. This hasn't frozen down here at the bottom yet. You can see the snow kicked up around it. It's not frozen or evaporated. This is what this is what hell would call a crispy track.
Here's the plan. I'm gonna walk up to the top of this ridge where the majority of that deer activity was. I'm gonna hang a left to get into some new stuff that we didn't walk yesterday. And then I'm gonna find a big three inch by three inch track with dew claws that stick way out. I'm gonna say, holy crap, that's a big buck. I'm gonna start sneaking along 100 yards and we'll come over a ridge and a big old bodied moose of a buck's gonna be standing there. He's gonna be blind and deaf just by coincidence. So he won't be able to hear me walking on these cornflakes. I'm gonna drop him in his tracks. That's my plan. <laughs> That's the buck I'm gonna need in order to kill one today. Because with how this ground is, I'm guessing it's gonna sound like a herd of elephants is walking through the woods. So, blind and deaf buck, that's what I'm looking for. solid day's work but no deer so tomorrow Sunday and in Maine you can't hunt on Sunday so tomorrow I'm gonna kind of rest and recoup do a little work and be back Monday I don't think the weather's gonna be good it's gonna be warm so this might be the end of the snow so Monday might be a brand new place brand new game plan but I'll figure that out tomorrow for now I'm gonna go get some meatloaf All right, it is day three here in Maine, and it's rainy, but the hope is that farther north and in higher elevations, we'll find some snow. So I'm heading to a new spot, actually, uh, that I haven't been yet, following one of Hal's buddies, who's just gonna kind of point us to a parking area that'd be a good spot to get into. So we followed him and actually came in down this logging road and just lucked into, I think, the best possible scenario. A buck and a doe track crossing the road in front of us. But I'm very excited. I mean, this isn't like a big, big track, but it's definitely a buck. And that's all I need right now. So I'm gonna grab my gun, get loaded up, and I think it's light enough now that uh, I can get on track. So super exciting start to day three. So here are those tracks. You can see right down here. Here's our buck track. Here's that doe track. The doe track, I've, I've always found doe tracks to kind of look like a heart. While these buck tracks, those toe pads are much more rectangular. And then you can see the dew claws really nicely behind here. And this isn't a huge track, but it's still, you know, more than three fingers wide. And, you know, two and a half to three inches long, so qualifies as one worth following.
Just looks like he might have bedded here for a second. When you see the buck track, you can tell. Big difference. I, I absolutely feel like I'm finally in the ball game for real this time. I'm either going to see and shoot this deer or I'm going to spook it. I think that's guaranteed at this point. I hate to say it, but I think about time. This track's just, he's too far ahead of me. So, what is it? Four days, 30, 34 miles, zero deer. But it's been a hell of an experience. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave this one hungry. I'm going to pull this off someday. I don't know if it's going to be in Maine or Michigan or somewhere in between, but I'm going to track down a buck. <laughs>